and welcome back to coverage here at the Magic World Championship. We're in Boston. I'm Marshall Seck with in the booth with Paul Chion and Luis Scott Vargas. And we are in the finals, giving away $100,000 to first place here today. That is the biggest prize ever at a Magic tournament. That makes it the biggest Magic tournament in history. William Huey Jensen or Javier Dominguez, the money and the fame and the trophy, it's all up for grabs. One to the good for Jensen. Though Dominguez is on the play here. No one drop. And he did not have a one drop. Remember, we're still pre-sideboarded, so he'll have all those cards in. And he does have, though, a Carries F Skyship Raider to kick things off. Yeah, let's, see if we have, uh, let's see if we see a Harness Lightning. Does Huey have a Harness Lightning in hand here? He does not appear to. He, his turn two play of Long Tusk Cub is good, but this, this just gives Javier you know, a target for his various removal spells. Yeah, he's not as great on the draw. Right, using a braid immediately to kill oh. the Long Tusk Cub, and that also gets him in for three damage here as Jensen's going to fall down to 17 before having the turn pass back to him. Now, here's a big turn here. Turn three for Jensen. A lot of action from his deck on turn three, including cards like Whirler Virtuoso or this one, Rogue Fire. Well, in this matchup, uh, Rogue Refiner certainly takes a backseat to Whirler Virtuoso, despite Rogue Refiner being overall the more important card. Yeah, certainly doesn't match up particularly well against Kerry Zev. Yep. Well. Yep. Wow, and he's just going to jam with three creatures here. This is wow. a great it's curve out from damage. Javier Dominguez. Getting in for five. Yeah, he is happy with this trade. And if you take a look, actually, at Javier Dominguez's hand, he wants to just empty out his hand. He's got two copies of Hazard the Fervent. All he needs is a land here to be able to attack for five Four next MG. turn. It's a big turn. If Javier Where's can draw a land here, we're going to see Hazret rumbling into the red zone. He did. And he hit a land, land, and it's a perfect land, too. Sunscorched Desert to get an, wow. an additional point of damage. And excuse me. And here we go. Raghavan joins the team, and everybody's sideways. This is 10 damage. Jensen. And look at just the explosive nature of this deck. Well, Huey played a 2-drop, a 3-drop, and a 4-drop, and he's really far behind. Yeah, this one is hugely in Javier Dominguez's favor. You can tell he's all business here. I actually bumped into him right before the finals, and he said, you know what, I feel like today's a bonus. And I said, well, it's a pretty big bonus, my friend. And he said, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like he has came prepared for game number two to try to earn that bonus here, because uh, he's got to beat one of the game's best, a Hall of Famer, to do it. But boy, this draw has been blistering for Dominguez. Yeah, I don't think he can really afford to chump block the Hazard here. He probably just needs to block the Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah, but even that looks scary, given that there's already five lands on the battlefield for Dominguez. Yeah, he's now down to three life. And the Teamer Energy deck doesn't really have a whole lot of answers to a resolved Hazard the Fervent. I believe there is one Confiscation Coup and one Commit to Memory. Yeah, you are right about that. And there's a Rogue Refiner for Jensen. But he's just found a couple of lands for the turn, and this is not going to get the job done for him. No, he would have needed to draw Magma Spray or Harness Lightning, and he drew neither of those things. Well, let's see what Dominguez has come up with for his turn. First, he's going to activate Hazaret, discarding another Hazaret, and this yep. is going to force yep. the game. And wow. that's it. Javier Dominguez with a lightning fast victory here in game number two. Not much to be said about that one. Dominguez just smashed him. Well, when, you, when you're attacking with Hazret on turn five, mm -hmm. especially after curving out two drop into two drop into two more two drops, you're going to end most of the games, especially on the play. If, if Jensen was on the play and had a world of Virtuoso, maybe that game goes a different way. But on the draw, it's really hard to compete with that. OK, well, what this sets up for us here is a best two out of three all sideboarded games. So why don't we take a look at the sideboards because well, we can guess how important those are going to be in these next three to decide who wins $100,000 for first place. We're going to start with William Jensen and take a look at his sideboard. How has he prepared for the red matchup? Well, he's got Aethersphere Harvester, Chandra's Defeat, and a Braid as interaction. Confiscation coup number two comes in. You just have to deal with Hazaret. You, you need an answer to, to the god there. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a little clunky. Confiscation coup is a little clunky, and when they when these two players actually played in the Swiss, I saw Jensen lose a game to Javier, where Jensen had confiscation coup, drew, drew his fifth land that was a tap land, a spire bluff canal, and that one turn delay was too much for him to overcome. 
Yeah, and Confiscation Crew also a little bit better after Cyborg because there is a very reasonable chance that Javier Dominguez boards in some bigger creatures. That's right. They often will trim those cheap creatures. Let's take a look, though, at Javier's sideboard here and get a feel for what he's got going on because he may, he may well have been prepared here for this matchup as well, given the popularity of Teamer Energy, even in the new format. Pretty straightforward sideboard here, Paul. What do you see? Yeah, so I see Chandra Torch of Defiance, which generally really shines in mid-range matchups. The ability to just put it onto the battlefield, get a creature off, and then just have that be the continuous, so continuous source of card advantage is a big deal. I also see two copies of Glorybringer, which I think Javier could look to bring in, which then makes the confiscation coup that William Jensen brought in even stronger. There are also other cards. Rampaging Ferocidon might be a consideration, especially if William Jensen's game plan is, you know, play World of Virtuos, make a bunch of Thopters. You know, it does kind of punish you a little bit. But the fact that at the same time, it, it's, a, it's a pretty bad tr trade with World of Virtuoso means that maybe that doesn't come in. Chandra's Defeat is also a reasonable consideration. There are targets. Right, you have World of Virtuoso. We identified that that is a pretty problematic card. On top of that, Glorybringer is a four of in Huey's deck, so he might consider it. But I think those are the only red creatures, so maybe he opts to bring in one, but two. You know, ha holding one of those in your hand and having it be a dead card also feels pretty bad. Yeah, especially for this very proactive deck, not looking to sit back though we very well may see Javier shift his mana curve up a little bit and take his, the pedal off the metal just slightly. Yeah, and I think play draw also matters a lot too. I, I can total, I can see Javier Dominguez just going with mono one drops when he's on the play, be hyper aggressive, and then when he's on the draw, maybe to kind of transform into more of a big red deck. Well, the tension is going to be raising down here in the feature match area between Dominguez and Jensen. Both of them eager to get playing, you know, that they said that the waiting around part was the hard part for them, especially for Jensen, who had a longer wait leading into the finals as he won the first semi, but... Uh, <laughs> it ended up not being that long of a wait. It wasn't that long, <laughs> Javier yeah. dispatched Josh out of Layden about as fast as these things can possibly go. Yeah, game one went relatively quickly here, but game two was over in a blink. Do you think just, it's just six turns. too late for Josh's mom to get her money back for the flight, or...? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, uh, I think she's okay <laughs> <laughs> with uh, <laughs> with that. Well, that's two out of three now, gentlemen, and we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars up top here for first place. They've got to be feeling that right now. Yeah, when a lot of these players were interviewed, this is this is life changing money. Mm -hmm. This is a ton, you know. These pro players are, you know, grinded out, go to all these Grand Prix, kind of for the dream of qualifying for the World Championships. This is the biggest stage. That's right. You know, it's funny because Jensen said, you know, it wasn't really his goal at the onset of the season to get here. And he ended up winning a Team GP and an individual GP very late in the season to qualify for Worlds. And he has ran that through all the way. And I'll tell you what, once he qualified... Boy, he took that very oh, seriously. He's been testing for almost a month out here in the Boston area with Reed Duke and Owen Turtenwald, and they have been putting in serious work, like 10 hours a day, mono magic. And that hard work has paid off for Jensen as he finds himself even. A game of peace against Javier Dominguez here in the finals. Kerry Zeb's the first play of the game for uh, Dominguez outside of that shock. Yeah, Kerry Zeb goes very nicely around Rogue Refiner. Rogue Refiner, a great card, but can't block the carries up by himself because she has menace and then Raghavan will take down Rogue Refiner in a fight. Mm -hmm. Raghavan fights dirty, I think. Yeah, well, <laughs> keeps coming back for more, too. So it does look like Javier Dominguez actually uh, brought in that Rampaging Ferocidon. He did. So and another op menace creature. And opted to play it, of course, after combat <laughs> yes. because he would have taken one damage from that monkey token. That's right. Mondo combo there. William Benson has Harness Lightning in hand, one of the most important cards for, for, his, for this particular matchup. But he has a, a number of options here. One of the, the features of this teamer deck is every turn it feels like you've got like four or five different like viable plays. Yeah, you have a ton of just great, cheap, efficient spells. And, you know, you, it, 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 yeah, it just feels like you can just do so many different things. Unless you have a World of Virtuoso, in which case I, I, I'll just play that thing. Well, one of the things that uh, would keep William from wanting to do that is he's got Essence Scatter in hand. And this is the turn where he gets to Essence Scatter Hazaret if she was to come down. Yeah, he has multiple options here. He has access to the Essence Scatter and Harness Lightning. If Javier Dominguez goes land Hazaret, for example, he does have the answer right now. 
And it looks like Javier did bring in Chandra's defeat. If you take a look at his hand, we've got a uh, number of options here. No, no fourth land. So Chandra and Glorybringer you know, waiting a little while, but Chandra's defeat plus some Earthshaker Kenra's actually does not look like Javier has great attack steps here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to figure out what Javier might have sideboarded out. It could have just been all of the one drops as they do get kind of blanked pretty hard by all these tutus. Beaumont Kerr does not line up well against World of Virtuous. So. <laughs> right. It's kind of interesting. Earthshaker Kenra was the play for Javier. William said, yeah, yeah, that resolves. He has targeted the Long Tusk Cub, but Jensen did respond by putting a plus one, plus one counter on it, meaning it will be able to block here. Yeah, and as I touched on earlier, you know, Javier Dominguez opted to bring in that Chandra's defeat, and it's currently sitting in his hand, not doing anything. Yeah. Also, Javier uh, missed his Ferocidon trigger. It does, of course, lash out wildly at both <laughs> you <laughs> and your opponent. So it's that's not a calm for us, Adon. We'll let Paul de design and develop that one later. <laughs> Complacent for us, Adon. <laughs> Peaceful for us, Adon? Well, Is let's that not a go that far. No? No. No. Sure. Okay, sure. so the Harness Lightning is going to take down the Ferocidon here. Javier, no attacks that turn. So Jensen gets to breathe a little bit here after he used that Harness Lightning. And remember, he did keep up that copy of Essence Scatter as well. And if Jensen's in a position where he gets to just keep up Essence Scatter every turn, first of all, that means that he's got the board stabilized. Second of all, he's just not going to cast that Essence Scatter on anything but Hazaret or Glorybringer. Like he. he you saw how fast he let Earthshaker kind of resolve. He already has thought about his range of targets for Essence Scatter. He's not going to have just sit there and think with uh, <laughs> the Earthshaker Kenra on the stack for, <laughs> for 30 seconds and be like, okay, it resolves. That's like, right. D this is not, you know, William Jensen's yes. first rodeo. No, so what he's going to do is he's going to play a tune with Ether. That gives him access to a basically free land drop here. And then he's got a Servant of the Conduit that he can play while still leaving up Essence Scatter. Yeah, so now he... He does have the potential here to just start attacking in with the Long Tusk Cup if he wants. That, that does put Javier Dominguez on a clock. He now has access to six energy. So that Long Tusk Cup, well, <laughs> that, that might be a little too much, but it we, can we, be we a 6-6. Six, six. We, we might see a 7-7 <laughs> uh, uh, seven, seven Cup at some point. And this is an important interaction here, right? The fact that Jensen, as early as he can, starts taking it to Javier. Right. Jensen can't wait around forever. Cards like Glorybringer, cards like Chandra, these are powerful cards. Cards like Hazaret. And Jensen knows that eventually Javier's going to play some of these cards. Well, let's see if Javier goes for the Hazaret right here. I think he's going to play a Chandra, though. Sure, you're yes, and that plays nicely around that Essence Scatter. So a big play here for Javier Dominguez as he lands his powerful Planeswalker. We've got a quick update from Tim Willoughby, who's down on the floor. Tim, what do you got? Well, I have the sideboarding plans for each of these players. Uh, it looks like Javier Dominguez taking out the full four Arncop Crashers, uh, one Abraid, one Skull Scar Mage, and a Shock to make room for four Rampaging Ferocidon, one Glorybringer to Chandra's defeat. On the other side of things, Huey making relatively small changes. William Jensen taking out three Glorybringer and one Commit to Memory, and then four one offs an Aethersphere Harvester, Chandra's defeat, Abraid, and Confiscation Coup. Thank you, Tim. No, it's almost like you knew a cyborg plan, Luis. I don't know if you heard, but I had dinner with PGO the other night. Yeah, you said. No, I don't the, think the, you've said that enough. Actually. I said the topic of discussion <laughs> was sideboarding. So. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who wins that one. So, so note there that the second Earthshaker kind of resolved again without incident, thanks to Chandra plus two red mana. William just not willing to pull the trigger on this essence scatter. He he just knows that he does not need to do that. And I think Javier Dominguez's game plan now is protect that Chandra. Don't have any good attacks. And uh, you know, William Jensen likely to go after this Chandra, forcing the chump blocks from Javier Dominguez. Check you. Ooh, Jensen Just going kidding. right for Javier Dominguez, ignoring Chandra here. Same result. Javier still, though, yeah, chump blocked, like you said. Javier now does have the option to add two red mana from Chandra Torch of Defiance to eternalize Earthshaker Kinra, and eternalize does not put the spell on the stack, so it actually dodges it being essence scattered. Yeah, that's right. So, so Paul, I have a question. If, you, if you're Javier, and Huey has left up two mana every turn for the past four turns, how, how much are you thinking about essence scatter? You, you had two Earthshaker Kinra's resolve. That does make it a little less suspicious, but are you putting Huey on essence scatter now? 
I mean, I'm still putting him on either Essence Scatter or Harness Lightning. You have to at least consider that. So I think playing Glorybringer might be a little bit risky, especially given that you can just eternalize Earthshaker Kenra, and it's relatively free, and you can even use the stun effect to make sure one of Huey's creatures cannot uh, block. Though the Whirler Virtuoso does make that play a little less effective. It, right. The fact that you can throw in a Thopter token at any point here means that uh, Williams had effectively higher life. <laughs> He could we've just got, go for We've the got the hands on here. foreheads mirror match going there, <laughs> too, by the way. I kind of like that. I appreciate it. The chat's loving it, too. Yep. Okay, he has made the mana, I believe. Is he going to go for that Glorybringer, or are we going to see Earthshaker Kenra make a reappearance here? Looks like a Glorybringer to me. It is, and that's good news for Jensen. But, but Glorybringer's so powerful. Right. <laughs> Jensen's going to go ahead and burn one energy for an Aether Hub, but that does Essence Scatter. That Glorybringer immediately hits the graveyard, and that's really all the action that Dominguez has this turn. Passes it back. It's funny, because we're used to Chandra being in play, putting tons of pressure on the opponent. William can mostly ignore it. The Chandra ultimate is a real thing. Once she gets hit seven, that he has to respect her ability, but for right now, Jensen can actually attack Javier, maybe ping in Chandra with the Thopter to, to keep her off ultimate, but for the most part, he doesn't actually need to get her off the board to win this game. Yeah, and I think that was the reason why William Jensen opted to make a Thopter token their end of turn. Ra rather than leaving that energy up for the, the Long Tusk Cub or something like that. Yeah, the Long Tusk Cub is currently big enough to attack through a double block here, so he doesn't actually need the energy to you know, th threaten a 7-7 seven, seven Long Tusk Cub here. And the, the Servant of the Conduit in William's hand is going to get him back up to that critical three energy to, you know, make it so he has all the options available, either the Virtuoso or the Long Tusk Cup. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, Rogue Refiner also gets in this turn, just trying to finish the game off because William Jensen has a pretty overwhelming board here. This is the last spell in his hand here. He drew a mountain for the turn, but look at this big attack here from Jensen. Lining up four attackers, Dominguez down to 12 life. No very profitable blocks. Earthshaker kind of can trade for Rogue Refiner. Carries out can bounce off the Servant of the Conduit, but can't even block the Thopter in that Long Tusk of just rampaging, like almost as much as a Ferocidon. Yep. That Cub is doing serious work here. The biggest threat on the battlefield, and it has been since the early part of the game. Dominguez is currently examining what these blocks might look like, but it doesn't look great. That's seven damage. This Long Tusk Cub has just done so much work over the course really of this weekend. It really has. Dominguez's life total is plummeting pretty quickly here, and he is getting close to being dead at just five. He's got a lot of work to do as well. At 15, he finally found a target for Chandra's defeat. I think it's Thopter time, yep. Yeah, he's going to cash in the one last Thopter. He still has two energy left over as well. Before passing the turn back, it was a mountain off the top for Dominguez. Yeah, not a whole lot of cards Javier can draw here. What is even the best card? Maybe it has a red, but even then, it, the Long Tusk Cup can actually just block it if you wanted to. That's right, and here is Lightning Strike revealed by Chandra. Now, of note, Chandra is up to seven loyalty. That is where she ultimates, so next turn, that could be a possibility, but that also assumes that Javier is even alive here. Also, Javier may not even have time to play enough spells into that emblem for the emblem to really matter. No, it really... <laughs> Ignore the Chandra and the emblem. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that Javier has to make a block this turn on the Long Tusk Cub. Four other damage okay, okay. could get through, but that would not be lethal. Two, two lands in hand for Jensen. He has slowly but surely worked himself into a good position this game. But this is kind of where it's going to come to a head because Chandra is ready to go ultimate and he can't quite kill Javier here. Yeah, there's a couple main questions here. Long Tusk Cub is coming in. We, we know that. Right. The Thopters are attacking. Whether one of them goes after Chandra is the main question. And do you attack with Servant of the Conduit given that Karizev can just break wall Servant? Yeah, I think the attack that makes the most sense here is just the Long Tusk Cub and the Thopters as... As you mentioned, the, the Servant will just get blocked by the carries of And I imagine the Bomac Courier is the card that's going to go in front of the Long Tusk Cub. And then one of the Thopters heads to Shock. Yep. That's right. He, so he is going to hedge a little bit here. Yeah, look, you're, not, you're not bad at this, Luis. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jeez. Oh, come on. I was going to say, Luis, maybe you should play more. But <laughs> this, is what, this is what happens when I try to say nice things, you know? Oh, I know. I learned that lesson. I'll teach you the secret later, Paul. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, w William is doing a very good job maneuvering this game where he has had a, you know, a, a quite a strong draw, but he, he's been able to pressure Javier significantly. He finds Hazaret off the plus ability from Chandra there. Is it too little too late? No, I, I think that this this game is, is still is still going to go on here because Hazaret can block the cub, and the Thopters are going to pressure, oh, pressure Javier. But William doesn't have great attacks past that, and Chandra could potentially actually minus three to start killing Thopters. It's not the most efficient way to to kill Thopters, but it can get the job done. Yeah, so William Jensen definitely going to at least go after Chandra here with one of the Thopters. He can, uh, he can opt to attack with everything. If he did do that, I imagine Javier Dominguez would block the Long Tusk Cub with the Hazret the Fervent. The Servant of the Conduit would get blocked by, Haz uh, by Kari Zev. And then William Jensen could use that Magma Spray to get the Kari Zev off the battlefield. Jensen once again deep in the tank, trying to put the finishing touches on this game, though. It may be slipping a little for him here as Javier had a nice hit off of that Chandra. It's the, it's the only way Javier really has to blank Long Tusk Cub. Well, it looks like a one and one. Yeah, and that, and that is a precarious position because, yes, that Huey is making some forward progress here, but Javier actually is in a position where he can maybe stop those Thopters. <laughs> Do you think we're going to see a Chandra minus three here? Oh, it's, it's definitely possible. Although, if you see that. Then William has to decide whether or not he wants to still go after Chandra, put it at minus, at two, so Chandra can't minus again, or just go after Javier. Well, wow, is he actually what. coming back from this with this Chandra? It could be, though. Jensen has the answer here for this Earthshaker, Kenra. He's got a Magma Spray in hand. Javier can also attack with Hazret before using Chandra, and if Jensen blocks with the Long Tusk Cub, Chandra can finish off the Cub. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I think Javier's life total is just so low. Yeah, I, I mean, think he's he's just looking to just play as many creatures as possible and just kind of get three? back into this game if he can. <laughs> One of the cards he drew is a rampaging Ferocidon, but he is at three life. Yeah, Ferocidon cuts both ways. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough spot. I mean, look at Jensen's life total. He's at a full 15 here. Javier not able to kill him this turn. Maybe he could try to set up some two-turn scenario, but... I think that Jensen is likely going to need to draw one more good spell this game. I don't think that I think that he he's got a good enough life total advantage that he's in the driver's seat, but he he is going to need to draw something relevant, a removal spell to get you know if he draws a removal spell he he can potentially end the game. If he draws another threat he can glory potentially go, go around Hazard. Yeah, glory bringer would be of course the best just, draw I believe. Just game ender, yeah. Confiscation coup, one of his high impact cards, but. Despite that Cub doing some work, Hazard the Fervid is, is battling back quite well here. Yeah, so William Jensen could opt to just take the damage here because he's at 15 life. And if he does opt to do that, that Long Tusk Cub will force a chump block. Or he could opt to just maybe put the Servant of the Conduit. I don't think he's interested here in blocking with... Oh, okay, the Earthshaker Kenra was targeting the Servant of the Conduit. But I don't... I, I think this block isn't great because this Long Tusk Cub is the reason why he's keeping all the other creatures at bay. Yeah, it seems unlikely that William would want to, to put Long Tusk Cub in the way of Hazard, especially since he can force Javier to start using Chandra on the Thopter tokens, maybe, at which point the Cub could block Hazard safely. No blocks. No blocks. He's going to take the damage. That's five. He falls down to ten. ten. Yep. Javier's halfway there. All right, what is Javier going to do with this Chandra? He could opt to play the Rampaging Frostodon as well. Which he, he likely will, because even though it deals damage to himself, it still is a good card to have him play. And he can also just chump with it. Oh, down goes the Thopter. <laughs> <laughs> we are seeing Chandra go after those Thopters. This is about as close as it gets here. Jensen needs something explosive off the top to seal it right now. Otherwise, he's going to have to hang in there and earn it. He did not find that anything not great. It was done. a servant of the conduit. At least it was a spell for Jensen, but it was not a game ender. Dominguez has done an admirable job of hanging in here. He was way behind this game, and now he's halfway there to getting Jensen dead. And keep in mind, Javier Dominguez still has two copies of Earthshaker Kenra in his graveyard. 
It's really hard for Javier to draw dead draws here because lands let him start internalizing Earth Shaker counters. Drawing a land is like drawing a 4-4. Four -four. Right. And spells, well, spells he can cast, and they, yeah. they do good things. If you draw burn spells, he can get that pesky Thopter off the battlefield. If he draws Glorybringer, <laughs> that, that is also a pretty ideal draw. And William Jensen, being team or energy, no actual direct damage in his deck. There is no lightning strike in the team or energy deck. Does William want to turn that cub sideways? Seems very difficult to do it. But what he can do is he can send the Thopter at Chandra, and then that opens up the block on Hazret next turn safely. No, he's going to go wow. right for Javier Dominguez. He says, you. And that means that he's down to two. And that means that this Servant of the Conduit is actually a lethal threat. And William Jensko should go down to nine. That's right. The Rampaging Ferocidon will trigger here. Wow. It, it is Javier's trigger, though. William is not obliged to, to, to point that out. So what does Ramanoff Ruins was the draw step there for Dominguez. So let's see. He can eternalize the Earthshaker Kenra, which would put him down to one life with the Rampaging Ferocidon trigger. He can then make it so that the Servant of the Conduit can't block. And if he attacks with everything, William Jensen can block two so creatures. Yeah. He can block the, Earth the Eternalized Earthshaker Kenra and the Hazret. The Rampaging Ferocidon, the Ragavan, the Karyazev, and the 2-1 Earthshaker Kenra can get in. That's, That's eight. Three, four, five, six. That's wow. eight damage plus the two damage from the Chandra trigger. If he upticks, that's 10. But Huey is holding a Magma Spray in hand. Yes, he could certainly throw that math off. Oh my god, this is so close. And, and Javier might. He might feel compelled to go for this here. Right, he might be baited into the fact that Huey hasn't played a spell in a bunch of turns. Looks like Javier. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like, oh, look at Javier. He's trying to decide. Hey, do I just go, go for, for this? this here? Look at Jensen. Shows no emotion. Okay, so by eternalizing no Earthshaker Kenner, which is what he's doing. Oh, wow. He's committing to either attacking with everything and going for it or using Chandra to kill the Thopter. Oh, yeah, he can do that too. Is this enough? Well, wait, 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 is the Karizev not attack? Oh, he can't attack with the Karizev because of the Rampaging Ferocidon yes, on the battlefield. Yes, that's right. He can't do it. And there that's we gonna go. Do <laughs> Jensen fires off a Magma Spray, which changes the math wow. back in his direction. And Jensen calmly picks up game number three with a quick shake of the head. That is about as close as they come, kids. Wow. This was a, a real nail biter here. Team number three from the World Championship. Welcome back to the booth. That is Paul Chion, Luis Scott Vargas there, and I'm Marshall Secliff. And uh, thanks for coming along with us today as we work our way through the finals of the World Championship. Uh, this yeah, is that, getting that, stressful. That was kind of close. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> every life point mattered. Every card mattered. They, they played every card they had access to. And the, every attack versus Chandra versus not Chandra was super relevant. Yeah. Also, both players really got to enact their game plan. So we kind of saw the full brunt force of both decks going against each other. Yeah, I was just really impressed with uh, Javier Dominguez just actually able to hang in there and actually put himself in a position to win. It looked like he was so far behind that game, holding Chandra's defeat in hand with no targets for multiple turns. Not being able to deploy all of his threats and Huey just curving out perfectly. And uh, wow, just that one magma spray. Oh, that was that rampaging so close. Ferocidon hurt him. All right. He wasn't able to get there. That's right. All right. Well, we've got somebody else with some thoughts on these games. Brian David Marshall is with Reed Duke.